Google Maps of constellations, for instance. Uh, that's my favorite theory, but uh, I don't know what... Uh, Mike? Mike, yeah. uh, what do you think uh, these stone bowls were made for? Well, Luis, that's uh, it's a difficult question. Now, uh, I, as an archaeologist, should know better than anyone what these balls represent, and in fact, I know almost nothing. More than 1,500 giant stone balls have so far been found, the biggest eight feet across and weighing 16 tons. The granite they are made from has been brought from mountains many miles away. They are mathematically precise and must have taken years to grind down with nothing more than stone tools and abrasives. Today, they are the Costa Rican equivalent of the Garden Gnome. Dozens have been carried off to the capital, San Jose, to adorn important buildings. Others have been smashed by treasure hunters inspired by talk of hidden gold. But many still lie half buried in the jungle and banana groves where an unknown people placed them in a forgotten era. In half a century of painstaking work, not one real clue has emerged to explain the giant stone balls of Costa Rica. As you can see, we know nothing about the stone spheres. Uh, they remain and will remain for many years to come. A very true mystery. A few clues and a little logical deduction may, however, have helped this German scientist to find an astonishing explanation for another group of mysterious objects from the past. Dr. Arne Egebricht, director of the Hildesheim Museum, took us to Munich to an exhibition of treasures from ancient Iraq. There, modestly displayed, are three relics from old Baghdad. Dr. Egbrecht believes they prove that ancient people developed technology 2,000 years ahead of its time. These three curious objects were found in 1936 during excavations in Baghdad, in Iraq, and uh, they were found all together, one in the other. Now, here you have, first of all, a ceramic pot, and in this pot was put this copper cylinder, and in this copper cylinder, again, this iron rod was found on top and uh, on the bottom of this copper cylinder, uh, there was found bitumen. And if you take all these things together, this can only mean for a scientist that you have here an electric cell or a battery. The remarkable thing is that these objects are 2,200 years old. That means 2,000 years before electricity was invented in Europe, in Italy. In this experiment, part of an Iron Age fort is recreated in northern Scotland. Under test is an extraordinary claim that the ancient fort builders managed to produce almost incredible temperatures of more than a thousand degrees centigrade and so melt stones and turn them to impregnable glass. With American Richard Brinkerhoff, we walked on the very lintels of a great stone circle to investigate his theory that Stonehenge was an observatory. And the rude man of CERN may, after many centuries, yield up his true identity. Well, I think he's a Celtic god, really, a sex symbol. We did have one girl that was uh, been married for about seven years and uh, hadn't managed to have a child, so we told her to go and sit on the giant. Apparently, he was supposed to sit up Louis knickers off. I don't know whether she did that or not. But uh, the next spring, she was pregnant. I look at him every day. I think he is a sex symbol because he does uh, wonders for me. <laughs> The secret of who he is may lie in the soil, beneath the turf from which the giant is cut. Our tests, using the latest scientific techniques, reveal that the giant, who looks like this today, may once have looked like this. The clue to his name and date lies in the line under his arm. A mystery of the third kind is something where we just haven't a clue. It's absolutely unaccountable. If they exist, psychic phenomena would be mysteries of the third kind.
However, some events are so strange that they seem like mysteries of the third kind with no rational answers. But perhaps we can provide some clues. What would you think if this sort of thing happened to you? I was coming up this road, I was coming north, I was just about a block away, when all of a sudden a fish fell right to my right hand, the left hand side of the car. I saw the fish, saw the fish fall out of the sky, and I, I kept driving, I was very amazed, and when I got here, at this location here, the yard was just absolutely covered with fish. And uh, I, I was amazed, I stopped, and just about that time other people started, started getting here, and. Everybody was just amazed at the whole thing and just couldn't believe it. They couldn't believe that the fish had just dropped out of the sky. We heard something thudding against the umbrella. And when we looked, to our amazement, it was a shower of frogs. And they still were coming from the skies. There were hundreds of them. Our umbrella was covered. All our shoulders were covered. And as we looked up, we could see them coming down like snowflakes. We happened to be in the dining room, first of all. We heard this terrific clatter. It was an awful noise, wasn't it? Yes. <laughs> We rushed out and um, went down into the garden and presently a load of uh, broad bean seed came over and we both ducked, <laughs> ducked down because they're, they're fairly big, broad bean seed. And uh, then you got a little bit annoyed about it, didn't you? I turned around to the wife and I said, well, this is bloody silly. <laughs> I couldn't help it. Looking around, we found they were in the middle of a shower of hazelnuts coming from the sky. And uh, they were dropping on the cars, falling in the gutter, and I should think there would be as many as we saw, about 350 of them. It was very clear, and the sky was blue, and uh, there was one small cloud there, but there was no aeroplanes or anything like that about for them to come down from there. How they came and where they came from, I have no idea, but... Well, I have thought that it might be a vortex that sucked them up, but I don't know where you suck up hazelnuts in March. Our universe is such a strange and wonderful place that reality will always outrun the wildest imagination. Coming next, the start of this evening's Discovery Showcase, which follows the crew of the most advanced passenger liner in the world as they sail from Barbados to Mexico. Thank you.